Hi guys, and welcome to another kit review. Right, so today we're having a look at a kit that I've only just recently picked up. It is, as you can see, a kit from Tamiya. It is in 140A scale, and it is their Dornier DO335A feel. Okay, so this kit, kit number is 61074, and was released in uh, 2000. It's still available. Although it is one of those kits that is quite rare to find. Okay. This one cost me around 50 odd dollars Australian. Um, which I thought was pretty good. Because the last time I saw one of these come up it was pretty close to about 75 almost 80 dollars Australian that they wanted. So okay? not a bad pickup I reckon for a kit that I... Must admit, I've wanted for quite a long time. All right, so as you can see, she's the Dornier DO 335 push pull propellers. Uh, basically, one of the last aircraft that the Luftwaffe had to play with. Never entered operational service. I think there was only 14, 16 aircraft built, and there is only one of these still in existence in the world today and I think it's in uh, the US I think it's in one of those Smithsonian museums in the US unfortunately okay so that's the box as you can see she's sitting on the runway okay let's have a look at the rest of the box so on the side you'll see profile picture top and bottom picture of the aircraft and its unusual configuration Propellers front and back. Japanese, this will be basic history of the aircraft. On the other side, same again. Okay, so literally different work number, but exactly the same profiles. Okay, so that's the box. Let's have a look and see what's actually in it. Instructions, pretty good. We'll have a look at those shortly. A separate camouflage color chart with this kit which I thought was a bargain those are the original Tamiya decals I also got some aftermarkets and also an aftermarket paint mask but we'll concentrate on the kit itself for today all right so let's have a look one bag of sprues, which has the clear parts and propellers. Another bag of sprues, which has the tail, wheels, and even a pilot figure. This here is the nose weight, because this is a tricycle undercarriage, and therefore you do need a fair bit of weight in the front to stop it from falling backwards and being a tail dragger next bag is as you can see fuselage and this is quite a large aircraft okay really nicely done interior okay that's your um, nose for the aircraft pilots position etc and another separate sprue which is the wings so that is basically her wingspan right Fairly big, nice looking aircraft, probably one of my favourite aircraft of World War II. Okay, and that's what's in the box. In a second we'll have a look at the decals and the instructions. Okay, so let's have a look at the instructions. So what we have, front page, usual fairly modern Tamiya instructions, you have English, German, French, Japanese, basic history of the aircraft, okay. The DO-335, unless you didn't know, was the fastest piston engine aircraft of World War II. It could outrun the Hawker Tempests, Mustangs, even the P-38 Lightning, quite easily outrun them, okay. It also came with an ejector seat for the pilot, internal bomb bay, and um, wing cannon for later marks etc etc but 
as I said, never went into um, full production or frontline service. There was originally planned to have 150 odd of these built by 1946 with an ultimate 2000 of these aircraft flying. Okay, so that's the instructions. Let's have a look. So typical Tamiya, there is no sprue layout. Okay, so Tamiya's quality control, make sure that what you get is exactly what you're supposed to get. All right, so usual, use these tools. These are your Tamiya color callouts and only Tamiya. And then we get straight into, and as you can see, you do have a choice of three aircraft. Okay, so this is the work number 240102, 240107, and 240101, depending on which one you want to use the markings for. All right, so fairly comprehensive. You get a pilot, color call outs for the pilot, detailed, you do get um, decals for the pilot seat belts if you want to leave the pilot out. Okay, instrument panel, decals also for the instrument panel, but color call outs for painting all the way through. Fairly detailed cockpit. The only thing it's probably missing would be wires coming out of the, the back of the instruments, which is an easy do if you want to detail it up that way. As I said, color call outs. More details. This is your bomb bay, and you do get a bomb for it if you want to leave the bomb bay open or leave it out completely and just have the beautiful airframe of the DO135. Okay, then we carry on internal painting okay fairly basic air brakes etc for the aircraft this did have a mid engine and a front engine the mid engines were apparently prone to overheating catching fire but that would have been rectified in operational service anyway and the whole internal structure goes in this is your nose weight don't forget the nose weight otherwise she'll sit on the tail and look pretty ugly then you get to the front radiator cowling etc okay and as it says here closed flaps open flaps so you do have that option as well all right top of the fuselage goes on few more fittings wings go together so it's a fairly straightforward kit we're already up to step eight and it seems to go together quite easily tail okay front cowling goes on and then we go over to the undercarriage and like i said color call outs all the way so really easy easy to follow instructions easy to build Okay, so you could, if you wanted to, make this one in flight, but then you'd lose out on the unique tricycle undercarriage. The rest of the undercarriage goes on, one bay doors, and there's your option. You can have it open or closed. It tells you how to split it down the middle with your knife carefully. For my money, I'd probably just have it closed because it looks much better that way. Okay. All right, she's so just got um, a couple of vents to go on the back for the rear engine. Propellers, again, color callouts, really nicely done. Canopy, all right, and then putting the propellers on. You can have the canopy open or closed if you want to, fairly straightforward. And then that's it, she's finished. So step 16, and the aircraft is finished. And then we get to painting. So markings for three aircraft, as I said. This is just showing you where all the different warning labels, etc., need to go. They're included on the decals. And same for the side views. This is showing you exactly where all the individual decals go. Right? 
so it's fairly straightforward fairly easy to understand and like I said you also get this All right so this is literally and I'll pull this out so you can see full size this is the size of the aircraft when it's built okay this is how big you'll notice how big that's my hand this is a large aircraft and will use up a fair bit of shelf space and you could if you wanted to cut this up and use this for your camouflage overlays personally I think you'd want to keep this it's a great reference point and it's easy enough to mask off those areas anyway all right so really nice of Tamiya to give you this full size all right this is the model size so you can see it is quite a big plane okay and that is the instructions so let's have a look at the decals that's a bit far away sorry guys as you can see pilot seat belts instrument panel these are all your warning decals that go on the sides wings etc that's enough your crosses and your aircraft numbers okay really really nice detail on those and it does include swastikas for this for the tail right so a lot of aircraft models don't do that and you have to get aftermarkets this unusually includes them so that i like because you can't deny history yes i know to have swastikas in germany is illegal but it is still history for the rest of the world and you cannot deny it okay so i'll give you a shot of that and in a second we will have a look at the sprues okay so let's have a look at the sprues and first off we'll have a look at this this is your weight and there's a fair bit of weight in that let's say it's hard to say at least 100 150 grams maybe really hard to judge these things solid weight that will keep the nose down where you need it to be next we'll have a look at the important parts which is the clear parts okay so let's have a look see really nice detail on the clears okay really sharp and clear and no scratches which is what i love this is a second hand kit but was never opened by the previous owner and it shows and i'm loving it so far okay so we'll put those away carefully And next we will have a look at the engines so this is your engine sprue basic very basic all right you don't see much of the engine anyway nice propellers though really sharp and no flash all right big paddle propellers on this thing but that's why it became the fastest piston engine and aircraft of world war two right unique design push pull engine configuration but that allowed the strips the strip thing the slipstream to be minimized and the aircraft could really push it okay so that's really nice really sharp detail i'll give you a close-up of all this stuff like i normally do anyway okay no copyright on the sprue top but like I said this came out in 2000 so next we will have a look at
These are exactly the same. These are your tail and wheels. And as you can see, you do get two pilot figures, although you will only use one for this. All right, so let's put this one away. Um, I do believe that Tamiya did have a two-seat trainer version. There was one built that I know of in reality. And I even believe it may have gone to the UK for testing after the war. So you will end up with two pilots, one bomb. This is your tails up and your wheels. So that's your 48 scale pilot figure. And there's your wheels. So this is a big aircraft, like I said, and it does stand a fair way off the ground. These are your exhausts. Naturally enough, you're going to have four of those because this was a twin engine aircraft. But the detail is nice. It's a shame there's no tread pattern on the tires. They're quite smooth, but um, I guess once they're together and using photo references, you'd probably be able to etch those in yourself. Okay, so that's the wheels and the tail. Next through out is all your interior, okay? So, really nice detail on the wheel doors. There is your undercarriage with some really nicely done. There are some mold marks, etc. on these, which will need to be cleaned up before you put it together. That is your cockpit interior. Okay, that is your instruments, the back of your instruments. Let's turn it around. And there's the front. So, you do get a decal for the instruments, or you can paint them in. Completely your choice. The good thing is, turn this around again. That's the back of the, de the instruments. Okay, so depending on what you can see, if you wanted to, you could actually detail that up with some uh, very thin wire, like fuse wire, all right, to replicate the wiring for the instrument panel. Okay, but the detail is really nice, sharp and clear. So that will paint up really well. So your choice, decal or otherwise, that is the pilot's seat. And like I said, this aircraft had an ejector seat. I believe it was used on a couple of occasions, um, but I'm not sure how successful it was. And there's the rest of the instruments. All right, so they will paint up really, really nicely. And that is a very detailed cockpit. Okay, I don't see a need for aftermarkets. For this particular aircraft. Okay, so next we will have a look at one of the bigger ones, the fuselage. So, interior of the fuselage, fairly plain. There's not much to see. All right, this is your Bombay area here. Okay, but turn her over. And there you have it. She's a beautiful looking aircraft. Like I said, probably one of my favourite aircraft of World War II. All right, love Spitfires, Messerschmitts, 
But this beastie, I would have loved to have seen one of these things fly. Seriously, would have loved to have seen one of these fly. But, really nice panel lines. Alright, so I remember reading a comment about this model a long time ago about the panel lines not being deep enough. This is a 40A scale aircraft. Anyone who's ever been around real aircraft will know that you cannot see the panel lines. They're not that deep on a real aircraft because that creates drag. So I would say, even though some purists might say you, it's too shallow to pick out the panel line, it's scale accurate, and I like that. Yes, I know people love to pick them out. Personally, I would like to go for accuracy rather than deep gouges in the side of something that isn't real, isn't true to scale. And certainly, yeah, I can see the argument both ways, but my preference is scale. And there's some really nice detail there. Okay, hinge details and everything. Okay, so that's the fuselage. And the only other thing I've got to show you now is the wings. And they are quite large. Right? Like I said, this was a big beastie. Would have been very impressive to see it fly. Okay, so let's have a look. Again, really, really nice detail. Not deep panel lines, but enough so that it will show up once she's painted. Okay? Really nice. That's your nose undercarriage leg. Okay, underneath, again, so no, they don't, this aircraft does not have separate flaps, ailerons, etc. Okay, but that's fine, that's fine, but really, really nice detail on the wings. Okay, and that is it, guys. That is the last brew, and that is Tamiya's Dornier DO-335 Feel. One of the nicest looking aircraft I've ever seen. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. It is one of my favourites. Okay. Anyway, that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you've got something from it. For my money... This aircraft, if you see this model around, it's definitely worth picking it up, okay? Look for the bargains like I did. I got aftermarkets thrown in for free, so I'm really pleased with that. So, one for the collection, guys. Definitely one for the collection. Okay, and that's it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And as usual, until next time, take it easy, stay well, and I'll see you later.